This then brought on a near nervous breakdown from her. She was having a legitimate panic attack. This led to an ER visit and that led to an overnight stay in the hospital and then to the new medications. what's going on everybody hope everybody's feeling good hope everybody's doing well we are back with uh so yesterday we did the story um it was an online post reddit um we did the story where the guy's wife told him how he cheated on him a year and a half into their marriage or into their relationship but now they're married and he needs to get over it and she only told him because he was going to run into this guy at the wedding. So, big mess. Um, I saw that uh, someone said, or several people said, that, hey, there's updates to this. I said, oh, wow, let me go check it out. And sure enough, there are updates. <laughs> there are updates. So, let's just get started with this, man. Um, so, first update. Let's go ahead and get into the update on this. And if you, have, if you missed that show yesterday, if you missed that story yesterday, I'll put it up here in the cards. Go ahead and click that on the cards and watch it. Um, and then come back here and check out the update. Um, but let's just get into it. So, update. Me, 25-year-old male with my wife, 23-year-old female. She informs me at sister's wedding she had slept with best man. First, I want to clarify something from my first post that I really did not spell out very well. It doesn't have any real bearing on anything, but for some reason, it bugs me that I made this part sort of murky. The maid of honor, not my wife, was married to the groomsman who my wife walked down the aisle with. There were some people who felt my wife was trying to arrange the dance, but I do know for a fact that this part was legit. However, it doesn't mean she didn't try and offer to let them dance or any other form of manipulation, but I just wanted to try and clear that part up a little. I'm here because I have gotten honest to God over 40 requests for an update since last week. Thank you for your concerns on this, and I wish I had some really ballsy statement to make about how I stood tall and kicked her to the curb, but sadly, that is just not what happened. To be blunt, I am in limbo. There have been developments, but all they have done is make it harder for me to decide. Last week, I was mostly angry, then as the weekend progressed, I became mostly sad. I want to be able to hate her and flip that switch that tells me I'm being walked on. And I'm a sucker, but, it just, but it's just very hard for me to do that because I still love her. And this is ripping me apart. Here's what happened of any consequence. She finally came to the realization that I was not going to just get over this. This then brought her to the realization that I might want out of the marriage. This then brought on a near nervous breakdown from her. Someone from the first post stated that she would try and manipulate me like that and believe me, I was taking those words to heart when I thought she was having crocodile tears. But it soon became apparent to me that she wasn't acting or faking. She was having a legitimate panic attack. This led to an ER visit, and that led to an overnight stay in the hospital, and then the new medications, and a scheduled follow-up with her doctor for later next week. Wow. She had a nervous breakdown. This brought her family into it, and that in turn led to long conversations all the way around. When we got home with her family in tow, I was asking what she wanted to do since there was a house full of people and she said she wanted to be with her mom for a while. That was fine with me as I had no desire to hang around all day with her dad or sister. So I said I was going to go finish up something at work and would be home later. Two hours later I get there, I get a, I get a text from her begging me to please come home and that she really needs me so we can talk. So I finish up what I was doing and I head home. I am greeted on my own front porch by her dad who is asking if he can talk to me for a minute. My anger level was already somewhat high, but I was ready to go to war if she had dumped a crap sack of lies on me with her dad. 
I mean, it's not like he and I are best friends and crap, but I never had a bad moment with him, so I really wasn't going to be happy about being the bastard who broke his baby's heart. We sat on our deck chairs. I was expecting to hear anything but what he said. He said that she told them what happened and that he wanted to apologize to me because he because he said that he felt like he did it he did a really crappy job as a parent. Wow. And that this mindset that she had was really a creation of her mother's. And that while he loved both of them, he said they were wrong. And he had told his wife years ago that telling the girls that whatever happens before marriage doesn't count was a horrible idea and value system to install in them. He then said that he wasn't there to stand up for what his daughter did, but he just wanted me to be aware that what she was saying and how she was acting was simply because she honestly believed that being married was an entirely different life, that they, mom and dad, had romanticized marriage to the point that she wasn't understanding real life. Basically, he was kind of throwing his wife under the bus, but again, this is not what I was expecting at all. We shook hands and he said that no matter what, I decided he still thought very highly of me, which honestly made me feel really good for, for that moment. I then went inside and my wife is curled up in a ball on her mom's lap and you can tell she's been crying the entire time I've been gone. Mom gets up and comes and hugs me and tell me that she's sorry and that she loves me and is praying that we can work it out. My wife is laid on the couch at this point. Her mom and dad leave and she sits there looking at me crying. Okay, this is where I'm going to piss off everybody and just tell you that I couldn't take it. I went to her and we hugged for a long time with her telling me over and over how sorry she was. Hey, I know it was the weak thing to do, but again, I have to say in my defense that just before this incident occurred, I loved her with all my heart and would have done anything to not see her in pain. Whatever she had done, I still didn't want to see, didn't want to see her like that. Look, it's very possible that she was putting on an Oscar worthy acting job, but I don't honestly think so. She really seemed broken at that point in time. After a while, when she calmed down, I was asking her what she wanted me to come home and talk to her about. And she said she wanted to get everything out in the open so I, don't, so I didn't feel like I was being lied to or manipulated. So she wanted me to ask her questions and I wish I had written down a list, but I came up with a few off the top of my head. She was brutally honest with me and some of the questions I was asking I probably shouldn't have because... Now the mental image is just stuck in there, but honestly, it was there anyway. I just now have confirmation. First, I was asking for dates or, the, or at the very least approximate dates. I didn't tell her about the engagement concern I had because I didn't want her to change stories. And she remembered exactly when they occurred. Fortunately, this happened a little earlier in our relationship than she told me initially, so we were not engaged when this happened. Uh, maybe, I don't know. I can't tell you what a relief that was because I became physically ill when I thought about that when someone said and said that in my last post. Second, I was asking how many times. She went overboard with this because instead of just telling me how many different dates, she decided to tell me how many times there was penetration. Then came the hard part. Why did she do it? Okay, again, I'm not the most manly of men and I'm ashamed to admit this, but I couldn't get this out without starting to cry. I was asking why wasn't I good enough? Why him? Why did she not just leave me? It was her turn to hold me because at this point, everything came rushing at me. Her telling me, me having to watch them laugh with each other. Her now telling me how many times they did it and where they did it. But after I composed myself, I simply told her that the betrayal was horrible. But honestly, her response to me when I found out was just as bad, if not worse. She agreed with me, and she apologized for calling me immature. She said that she honestly believed that it wouldn't matter to me now because we were married. When she said that, this made my blood boil. I started to say something about it, but she jumped in and said that after talking with her parents, 
you know, she now sees that this was very wrong of her and that cheating is cheating, but she still feels like that our happiness that we have shared since being married should count for something. I then replied that I kind of felt like happiness was built on a lie. This led to another breakdown on her part and almost another ER visit. But between Ativan and having her breath into a paper sack, we got her calmed down. I let her sleep for the rest of the night. But Sunday we were talking again. By this time I wasn't as sympathetic as I had been. When we got home from the ER, I told her that I thought her introducing him to me was crappy. Me having to watch her dance with him was extra crappy. Which then I demanded to know why she, why did she think I would find out and how many of the effing people at the wedding knew besides me. I asked how often she sees this guy and she said that the wedding is the first time she has seen him in three years. Then I lost my crap and I was asking her if she effed him during any of, the, any of that time led up to the wedding. She got all pissy about it acting like she wouldn't eff anyone because she was married and I just lost my crap. Yeah, she's lying. She finally was asking me what she could do to help me get past all of this. Which may not sound like much, but it was the first time she offered to help me. So it was at least a nice gesture. I told her I wasn't sure what she could do or, or if there was anything either of us could do. And that I may never get over this. She said that she wanted to help because she didn't want to see me in pain. And that over the years, she was hoping I'd be able to judge her based on who she is now. She would do anything I wanted to work this out. Also wanted to be sure that I knew that she has been 100% faithful since we've been married and would never, ever cheat on her vows. I then was asking for a moratorium from further talks till at least Wednesday. I have two projects. I have to get done and honestly I'm just exhausted and know I have no effing clue what I want to do. I shift between periods of red hot anger where I, where I want to kick her out and then periods of deep emotional turmoil where I want to just forget this and move forward with her. Yes, I know this is not what anyone wanted to hear and no I'm not proud to and no I'm not proud to type it but it is what it is at the moment. Wow, let me get my thoughts. Wow, guys. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, he, um, sounds like he's going to forgive her or he's leading up to it. Um, I'm not going to pretend like I don't understand what you mean when you say right before all this happened, I was deeply in love with this person. So this is why a lot of people warn because like you have to go through it to understand sometimes or just read enough stories or learn from a lot of people's mistakes. But this is why a lot of people say, dude, she's going to try to manipulate you. Don't fall for it. She's going to cry. She's going to say, but I love you. I'm sorry. What can I do? And she's going to sound like she's really sorry, really, really sorry. But here's the thing. If he would have never gone to that wedding Let's say, oh, I had, he had work to do and he couldn't go to the wedding. She would have never told him about this. She would have taken it to her grave. The only reason she told him was because she was afraid he'd find out. He didn't want to get caught. She was scared to get caught. Oh, man, that manipulation to get you, though. I like, But I get it. I'm not going to pretend like I don't understand. Like, man, I was really in love with her. And you can and how a man could fall for those crocodile tears. Men do it every day. Hopefully that's changing more and more every day. And more men are waking up. But guys, tell me what you think about this update. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'll catch you guys at the next one.